There are a lot of things that you can say about humanity, but one thing that's honestly undeniable is that if you give them the chance to fight, they will. Wars have been waged all over the world, and throughout time, in many cases, you recall time periods by war and not by peace. That would make you think that the military doesn't really screw up, but they do. A whole lot. From setting military equipment on fire to the legendary Charge of the Light Brigade, here are 20 biggest military screw-ups in history. Number 20. Russian Soldier Torches Vehicle I'm going to ease into this a little bit because I'm sure that you're thinking that it's all about major military combat mishaps and things like that. And to be fair, this is indeed going to be a video that has some of those things, which includes the next entry. But something that everyone has to admit at times is whether or not your military is just stupid. And when you have stupid people in the military, no jokes about leadership just yet, bad things are going to happen and it's usually going to cost money to fix as a result. Such as with this Russian soldier, who was apparently just trying to get some food heated up from some cans, and then somehow went from heating up cans to heating up an armored vehicle and literally setting it on fire to the extent that it became ruined. Now, I'm not exactly sure how it happened, and he was royally chewed out by his officers afterwards, but still, there's no reason for this. Was he holding the flame to the car as he cooked the cans? And how did the whole vehicle burn down like it did? This is an important lesson for all military personnel. If you're cooking something, make sure the fire isn't anywhere near anything expensive. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Light Brigade Charge Alfred Lord Tennyson, in his poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade, talks about 600 men who dared to make a charge that surely would end their lives, but they didn't really care. They were led by Lord Cardigan against Russian forces as part of the Battle of Balaclava. This was a part of the Crimean War, a very well-known affair for reasons beyond the charge, but the reason that this charge is on the list is because while many would call it brave, the event as a whole has been a bit um, romanticized, despite it clearly being a blunder of massive proportions. For example, a lot of men died. There were multiple miscommunications on the battlefield that led to their deaths, and not the least of which was that they were originally supposed to stop the enemy Russians from removing guns from a certain spot, and yet there were no guns to be removed. Then the Light Brigade were motioned to take the Russian forces at a key artillery spot. They had horses and weapons, and that's about it, which is a clear mismatch. However, they went and tried anyways. While they did hit the camp, they were eventually overwhelmed, and many were either killed or captured. Sure, was it brave that they endured onward towards the Valley of Death? Yes, it was. However, if things had been planned out a whole lot better, backup had come like it was supposed to, and a whole lot of other things, it probably would have been a victory and not a defeat. Number 18. Battle of Changping now we go to ancient China to talk about the Battle of Changping. If you don't know, this was during a campaign between the state of Zhao and the state of Qin, and it began in April of 262 BC. In short, Qin had made moves so that it could go and invade Zhao, and China was very turbulent during these times, which was why they had so many different states and dynasties. In 262 BC, the commander of the Zhao army, Lian Po, decided to wait at Changping rather than engage the enemy who knew their rivals were further away from home and would run off supplies a lot sooner rather than later. Now, to some, this would seem like a defensive strategy or one of endurance, but never forget that defense wins championships, and Poe was correct in his decision. 
because in those days, supply lines were vital, and if you couldn't get enough supplies to your troops, you were pretty much screwed. The problem was that Poe's leaders were unimpressed with his tactics despite them working, so he would then be replaced, which became a problem because he was replaced by an idiot. One whose own father told his wife never to let his son lead anyone, which says a lot, doesn't it? He would attack the Chen camp with a large army and then followed them to a stronghold at Changping. Though it was a trap and the Zhao army would be surrounded, its supply lines cut off, and eventually the whole army was surrendering and was then executed. Number 17. Battle of Lake Trasimene we now move to another legendary battle that you may not have heard of, the Battle of Lake Tresemine. Now you might know the war that it was part of, the Second Punic War. That war was spearheaded by the legendary Hannibal Barca, who swore to take down Rome in the name of his father. This was one of the key battles of his campaign. Hannibal and his men had suffered both victories and losses, but one of his greatest wins came not only because of his own tactics, but the foolishness of a Roman general named Gaius Flaminius Nepos. But why was he a fool? Well, because he didn't care about Rome. He wanted fame and fortune, and beating Hannibal would do just that. After a long, hard march to Lake Trasimene, Hannibal laid his trap, and Flaminius went right into it. On a foggy morning, he ordered his advanced guard to charge, but couldn't tell just how big Hannibal's forces were, nor did he know that many of them were in the nearby forests as he did not send scouts out to check. Flaminius and his forces charged quickly and lost steam, and then Hannibal summoned the rest of his hidden forces and went on to slaughter 15,000 Romans, capturing many more than that. Only 5,000 of Flaminius' men would escape, and he wasn't one of them because he also died in the assault. If he had been rational and didn't get blinded by what might happen if he won, he would have killed Hannibal long before he got so far. Number 16. Battle of Teutoburg Forest and if you think about Rome as a whole, you likely picture it at the peak of hallowed antiquity, mainly because this was not just a republic that thrived for many years, but an empire that dominated for just as many if not more. So you'd swear that they had very few blunders that could have ever hurt their reign. However, let's just say that when they'd made their blunders, the blunders were huge. For example, 200 years before the last entry was the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, where yet another ambush took place because of an idiot general from Rome. Meet Publius Quintilius Varus, a ruthless general who was quite competent and ruthless when it came to dispatching enemies of Rome. The problem, though, was that they were trying to dispatch Germanic tribes. One of them was the advisor to Varus and was betraying him under his nose. He sent a missive to Varus warning of an uprising, and Varus willingly went into the unknown territory to stop it. When a storm hit, he had to spread his armies out to thin in order to protect them from the elements, but as they went back into the forest, that's when the tribes would strike and completely wipe them out. They even took the prize eagles of Roman legions, and five of them were never recovered at all. That's why you're not supposed to rush into areas where you don't know the terrain, because it can end up killing you. Number 15. Battle at Red Cliffs Here's where I get into a bit of twisted territory because the man who made the blunder here, Cow Cow, was said to be a competent and respected leader, though he had done missions before with success, and one time even apparently won a battle despite having weaker numbers. But in the Battle of the Red Cliffs in the winter of 208 AD, he made a mistake that spelled the doom of both himself and his men, and many wonder why he even did it at all. During this point in China's history, warlords would rule the lands, despite it being headed up by the Han Dynasty. Cao Cao was one of the warlords in charge, and was indeed a very strong one at that. In fact, he ruled over most of northern China at the time. So what happened? Well, he wanted all of China and decided that he would get it no matter the cost, which in this case made him go down to challenge the southern warlords. 
and it said that even though his armies would outnumber theirs, he still lost. But how? Well, his men were sick, and he didn't really care. The ships he tied to the river were spotted, and so his enemy sent fake ships with kindling and then shot them so that they would all catch on fire and burn. His army panicked and got killed very easily, and when trying to escape, his path was turned into a swamp by the storm. Number 14. The Battle of Adrianople now here's a fun fact, Adrianople was a city that apparently had a lot of battles, but just how many? Well about 15 over its history. That's a lot of fighting for a city that you likely didn't know the name of to begin with. By the way, it's now known as Edirne if you weren't aware. But the battle that I'm focusing on is the Battle of Adrianople that was headed up by Roman Emperor Valens, who was apparently not the best at all. This was during a point in Rome's history where things were falling apart at the seams, mainly because there were barbarians at the gate and nothing Rome did seemed to stop them. Enter Valens, the Emperor of the East, because there were Eastern and Western Rome at the time. He had a barbarian problem and asked for help from the West to defeat them. Eventually, in 378 AD, Valens had enough and took about 40,000 men to Adrianople to confront them head on. This is where things went terribly wrong because he was informed that there were only 10,000 Goths heading to the city, so Valens went to meet them which meant weakening the condition of his forces. Then, after the Goths stalled for time, the Romans rushed in and the Goths set an ambush that wiped out two-thirds of the forces of Rome, leading to a major victory for the Goths that would eventually help topple Rome. Number 13. Napoleon in Moscow there are many men in history with whom commanding armies and dominating in wars just seemed like second nature, and Napoleon was absolutely one of those men. Because if you look at what he did for France, turning it from a rebellious country unsure of what was about to happen into a powerhouse that dominated much of Europe at the time, he was a force to be reckoned with for many years. The problem though was at times he got a bit overambitious and as a result of that would be prone to rather large mistakes. Few bigger than when he decided to go from Europe to Russia in order to conquer it. After trying to bring Russia into the fold diplomatically, which should have been very clear that it wouldn't work at all, Napoleon gathered up 500,000 men in 1812 to then march to Moscow. The problem was that Russians fight dirty and they were equipped to handle the coldness and bitter terrain of Russia, but Napoleon's forces were not. The Russians never ended up confronting Napoleon head on and instead did hit and run tactics that destroyed all of the supplies of the French forces. Moscow was supposed to be their saving grace, but when Napoleon arrived, the city was gone and then Russians went and burned the winter supplies of the French army down. Napoleon was forced to retreat because he knew the Russian winter would be certain death. Number 12. Bomb Strike now I head from ancient war to more recent ones, the war in the Middle East. In this case, Afghanistan. The war may have quote unquote ended by the order of President Joe Biden, but in truth, there's a lot of damage that's been caused to the country and even to the very soldiers of the United States themselves. Not all of it was intended. For example, some US forces would be fighting members of the Taliban and called in an airstrike to get them. The problem was the pilot who went to make the strike dropped it onto an American outpost. That's not supposed to happen. Thankfully for all who were involved, the strike did not take any lives, but that was due to luck and one commander getting his men out of the spot where the bomb was dropped. Sadly, it's an all too familiar tale from this war because there were many different accidents like this that happened over time, including ones that took the lives of civilians and soldiers alike. UAV drones are said to be the top of the line technology, but they've caused fear and problems all over the Middle East in ways that the United States should probably probably be very ashamed of. Number 11. Tow Missile Failure When your commander asks you, who are you firing at after a training exercise, you should probably be convinced that you're doing something wrong, and in this case, it was very wrong. 
The very simple video plays out a scenario that should honestly terrify many of you at home, because as you can see here, we have a very simple scenario of a training exercise. In short, they're testing out a tow missile to see how everything goes in the vehicle it's firing on, as well as the operator. And if you watch up until the firing, you'd think that nothing bad is going to happen. Everyone is rather chill, nothing bad's going wrong, and then they're all talking very casually. But when the missile fires, you see them react instantly. They're confused about the target the guy was firing at and where the missile went as a whole. Again, when your commanding officer asks you what you're firing at, that's certainly a problem. And this is someone who was clearly given the clearance to fire his weapon in the first place. It makes you question what's going on around there. Because if that guy gets to handle all these kinds of weapons, who else is firing them? Number 10. Russian Missile Fail Now we head back to the Russian border to talk about another failure, but this time I'm honestly not going to blame them too much for it, because it was more of a mechanical failure than personnel. One of the biggest weapons that we have in the world right now are missiles. They come in all shapes and sizes and can deliver all kinds of payloads. The beauty of these things is their versatility, and to the extent that they can be fired on the ground via a person, like an RPG for example, they can be fired from a vehicle, sometimes more than one at a time, and they can even be dropped from the sky by a plane or a UAV, oh and of course by ships that are used at sea. In this case, we're on Russian waters where the Navy is doing a test of one of their missiles. But when they do that, the thrusters on the missile spin out of control and the thing cartwheels in the air before crashing into the water below. The reason I'm not blaming the Russians here is because this has been known to happen multiple times. Rockets and missile science is volatile and sometimes tricky to get perfect. If just one thing happens to go wrong, you end up with something like this or a premature detonation. So let's just be glad the missile didn't hit the ship because that would have been so much worse. Number 9. Live from the Airfield this one's definitely a way too close for comfort moment, because this woman should have probably died, but for some reason was able to escape death by the skin of her teeth, or in this case, her scalp. You see, the woman's from Russia and was reporting on a major air show that was about to happen. Like a true reporter telling an interesting story, she's at the airfield as various helicopters are flying around, and all in all, it nails the point of the show that's going to happen later on. It's all good, except that one of the helicopters got way too close to the woman for comfort and one of the missiles even almost grazes her head. Now I know these pilots are trained to do precision flying, it's part of their job, but the problem here is that the woman could have died. Now true, she played it out like a pro and barely flinched, but one just has to wonder how close she felt that they got, because if she had noticed the truth, she wouldn't have been so calm and we wouldn't have blamed her for that. Number 8. Soyuz Rocket Launch Failure now, as I told you before, rocket science isn't always the best in the world, mainly because it takes just one simple thing to go wrong and then everything's really wrong, as I'm about to prove to you again. In this case, I'm talking about the Russian Soyuz rocket carrying a Photon M1 satellite. As you can see from launch footage, everything began great. It got liftoff, was headed into space, and then all of a sudden, boom. You can see the fireball emerging from the clouds as things took a turn for the worse and eventually the rubble of what was left fell from the sky as onlookers gave shocked gasps, a fair reaction given the context. It's a tragic situation to be sure, and unfortunately not the only terrible thing that's happened in space. However, as time moves on and things get better, hopefully the science will be perfected. Number 7. Grenade Throw In the heat of battle, there are very simple things that can very easily go awry, and that includes doing something as basic as throwing a grenade. If you recall a certain episode of Band of Brothers, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
However, when it happens in practice, that's a whole other story. During the Afghan war, American soldiers were sent to train Afghan soldiers in order to help them to defend their own lands against the Taliban and other warlords. But as you can see in this video, there's a US soldier teaching an Afghan soldier how to throw a grenade. It's pretty basic, and they're even using live rounds to ensure that the realism is felt. The problem, though, is that the Afghan was told to throw it in one direction, but his throwing style was so bad that it ended up being thrown in another entirely. It's kind of like when you're trying to teach your kid to throw a baseball and it goes through your window instead. Number 6. Grenades Again Oh, what's that? Well, that was just one unlucky instance. Surely it doesn't happen a lot? You're overestimating the intelligence and coordination of certain people? Well, for proof, we head to China, where once again a nice and simple lesson of grenade throwing is happening. And as you can see, the commander's incredibly competent, guiding his recruit on how to throw a grenade, and once again, they are using live rounds. You'd think that they'd learn. As the recruit throws it, it doesn't go forward, it actually goes backward, so much so that it lands in one of the trench areas that are right next to them. The commander dives down into the opposite trench while the soldier just hits the dirt and realizes this, pulling him to safety mere seconds before the grenade detonates. If that soldier had been where he was, he likely would have gotten seriously injured. Thankfully, that didn't happen, but I'd bet that training ended at that point. Hopefully, that person never got a grenade in their hands ever again. Number 5. Mortar Mishap now, we all understand that mistakes happen on the battlefield. It's natural, and everyone and anyone can make them. The catch, though, is that some of these mistakes can absolutely be prevented so long as you keep tactical awareness around you. Which in this case means knowing where a sound is coming from. In Africa, a section of soldiers were going and firing mortar rounds as onlookers observed. At first, everything's fine. The mortars are loaded correctly, the soldiers take their positions, and it's all good. The problem, though, is that the mortars are loaded almost simultaneously, and as a result, when the first ones are fired, one of the soldiers on the second mortar thinks that his gun just went off, and it didn't. So what does he do? He stands up, and then just as his head gets really close to the open end of the barrel, his mortar actually fires. It knocks off his hat, and no doubt gave him a bit of temporary hearing loss. It missed his head by not a whole lot. Number 4. Tank Ramp Fail now I'll talk about tanks, because tanks are undeniably one of the coolest things that the militaries of the world have ever had. They're built in response to trench warfare, and they've been getting bigger and more epic ever since. So much so that you'd think that the only way to screw up in a tank was by firing at the wrong thing, right? Well, in this case, no. Instead, I'm talking about a tank that decided to use a ramp to get onto the bed of a truck, no doubt for easy transport to a base or perhaps another area. Everything's going fine, that is, until the tank goes sideways, loses its balance, and then flips over, landing on its roof. Something that I think that you all thought would never be able to happen, but it did. However, if you look at the bed of the truck that the tank was being guided onto, there's a soldier that was almost crushed by its barrel as well. Number 3. Watch the Road are you up for another tank fail? Because this one's even more hilarious than the first. The last one you could honestly forgive due to the fact that tanks are big things that can be hard to get up small ramps, but here we have a case of a person who was just not paying attention. 
You see, a string of tanks were going around in a parade. They were being watched in a small setup area by some generals, and the tank in front does some maneuvers for the crowd, and they're loving it. But then he doesn't pay attention to where the generals are standing, and thus sends the barrel into their area, moving it along with the tank. You'd think that they'd learn at this point to watch where they're going when they're driving, but that's not the case at all, apparently. One just has to think that in the end, the generals had some strong words when the parade was over. Number 2. Seriously, watch the road. Here we have another tank fail video, but while the last two were operator error, this one is operator stupidity. The tank in question is doing a practice run for a parade in Belarus, which there's nothing wrong with that at all. But if you watch the speed of the tank as it's flying down the road, it's actually racing much faster than you usually see tanks go, and a whole lot faster than it would be going in a parade. That is, of course, a serious problem, because as you no doubt notice, the ground is really wet, even to the point where there's enough to get the tank to slide in place, drift, do a 180, and then crash into a telephone pole. Remember, this was supposed to be a practice run for a parade. Could you imagine if it happened at the actual parade, where it would be disastrous in all the ways that matter most? We're lucky that it didn't go in that direction, but it certainly could have. Number 1. Final Grenade Fail Now I'm going to end with yet another grenade fail because this one is not only hilarious, but it's one that could have been much worse than just one element had been changed. The soldier, with a very odd headpiece, is aiming his grenade into a wooded area. It's important to test in spots like this for the very simple reason that if you don't, you won't know how to aim properly in places that can be very hard to see. He winds up, throws, hits a tree, but he hits it so perfectly that the grenade lands right back into the hole that he's currently standing at. Thankfully for him, it was clearly only a smoke grenade because if it was a full-on live round, he would be quite dead. Or at the very least, incredibly injured. Word to the wise, never let him throw anything ever again. What did you think of this look at the military blunders of history that have happened? Can you believe the various times that the military or its personnel have screwed up so badly? And do you know of any other times when something like this has happened? Let me know about it in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.